look forward to them. Cool. Okay, let me share my screen. And I'll try to keep this to a half an hour, although the content uh, of this little tutorial will probably be more than a half an hour. Um, there's one exercise at the end that maybe we'll skip. Cool. So uh, here's my web browser. Uh, we've been having a little bit of technical difficulties today in terms of getting this binder to launch, but let me just show you in theory what you should do. So let me copy this GitHub um, link and post it to post it to uh, let me unshare my screen really quickly because I don't know how to use chat while my screen is shared. So does everyone see that GitHub link? Nope, okay. Everyone, sorry, I sent it to Tim privately. Okay, this should be seen by everyone. So this is just a link to our GitHub uh, page, the Harvard Informatics GitHub page. Let me share my screen again. And if you go there, which I will do right now, you will see we have a log of all of these coffee hours we've been doing. And today we will do Tidyverse part two. Uh, if you were not here for part one, it's not a huge deal. So to, in order to follow along, you can click this launch binder button um, which I'm not going to do because I've already clicked it. And we've been having some difficulties in terms of how long this binder takes to load. So because I've already preloaded mine, I'm gonna use that. But in theory, if you wanna follow along, just go to this launch binder. And uh, so if you press that and wait a bit, you will eventually see this screen, which is an instance of our studio, which I will make a little bigger. And also, I'm going to bring up this uh, other tab I have open, which is this data wrangling cheat sheet that I mentioned last time. Um, I have a link to it in the Tidyverse part one. But if you Google data wrangling Tidyverse R Studio, it's the first hit. So this is just a nice kind of graphical overview of all of the various commands that Tidyverse offers. And it's also nice because you don't necessarily have to commit these to memory. You can always just reference this cheat sheet. Last time we explored a lot of dplyr functions. Today we'll explore some tidy r functions. Specifically, we will uh, explore this gather function and this spread function in order to convert our data from wide to long format. I'll explain this in a little more detail shortly, or from long format to wide format. And one last thing I'd like to uh, mention is that these gather and spread functions to do these tasks have actually been renamed quite recently. So this cheat sheet created by RStudio is actually slightly out of date. But uh, for the tutorial that I'll go over today, we'll actually use the updated functions. So no worries about that. Just remember um, that these functions have been renamed. Okay, I'm gonna click back on my RStudio instance. So to go over this content, um, we need to click this R markdown file. So if I click this, it's gonna open up a text file up here, which I'm gonna to try to make a little bigger. And um, so we choose to kind of have our R code in markdown format. You do not need to necessarily do that. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. The only things that are really important here are these blocks of code. This is actually where computation gets done and what you need to do these analyses. We just like this R markdown format because with these blocks of code, we can just press play over here to execute them, which is super handy. And it also makes documenting our code with text intervening these code blocks much easier. So that's the only reason why we have code 
in Markdown format, but if you want to code in R, you don't necessarily need to do that. Cool. Um, and I'm, I'm also going to just like directly read from these notes that I've made, uh, just because things I say on the fly will probably not be as, as cogent. Okay, so, uh, so again, this is a, a tutorial on Tidyverse, and Tidyverse is a collection of R packages, I think like six or something. Um, and in these tutorials, we're going to cover dplyr and tidyr. So today we're going to cover tidyr. And the main goal of tidyr is to convert our data between wide format and long format. Long data is tidy data, where each row is an observation and each column is a variable. If that doesn't make complete sense, fear not. When we go over an example, it'll really drive home uh, this, this idea. Wide data, on the other hand, has many columns for the same variable, one for each categorical variable, for instance. Let's use some data on uh, M&Ms to illustrate the differences between these long and wide formats and why you should care about converting between them because it can make things a lot easier. So I'm gonna scroll down to this code chunk down here, which loads tidyverse, that's important. And then it loads in these, um, this M&Ms data set, which we download from this website. And as you can see, it's running. And uh, here are some, so the output of this code chunk actually gets put into this file right below it. Um, and this is just kind of the standard output after you load tidyverse, but I'm gonna X this out for a moment because it's not really that important or interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to our environment panel. So now we have a new object in our, um, in our environment called MMS wide, MMs in wide format. And let's just click on this and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's bag one, here's bag two. These are how much they weigh. And then we have a bunch of columns that correspond to the color of M&Ms and their number in each bag. So this is in wide format because we have many observations per row. We've observed 15 red for bag one, nine green for bag one, et cetera. Okay, I'm gonna keep this up, but go back to the R Markdown file and scroll down a little bit. So uh, just to repeat myself, again, this is in wide format because there are columns for the various colors. And this data would be more tidy if we converted it to long format and instead had a column representing color as a variable that could take on one of these six values. So for instance, this, this data table would be in long format if instead we had a column over here named color, and in this column were one of six values, red, green, blue, orange, etc. We would also need a corresponding column that contained the count data for each of these colors. So in addition to having a color column with all of the categorical variables, red, green, blue, et cetera. We'd also want a count variable that kind of stores, you know, the number of red M&Ms for, for bag one, for color red, et cetera. So we can use pivot longer to do just this, to convert from wide format to long format. And I'm gonna go back to this cheat sheet. So pivot longer corresponds to this old function called gather. And you can still use this function. Um, it's just kind of being slowly phased out. And we're going from wide format, where we have many columns, uh, to long format, where we have fewer columns, but more rows. The data is exactly the same. Nothing, no data is being added necessarily. It's just being reformatted slightly. Okay, so let's put our data into long format with the following code chunk. So uh, we're gonna make a new variable called M&Ms long, and it's gonna have the content of M&Ms wide, which is this data table we just created above. And we're gonna pipe this, we went over this last time, into a function to convert it to a tibble. This is a tidyverse specific data structure. Um, M&Ms wide is currently not a tibble, so we'll convert it to a tibble using this state here. And then now that we have it as a tibble, we will pipe this to the pivot longer function. 
So we need to give pivot longer some information. We need to tell this pivot longer function which columns we want to use to kind of gather our data from wide format into long format. We want to tell pivot longer all of the color columns. We want to gather all of the data in these columns, which we could do by typing out red, green, blue, orange in this colors argument, or we could just precede all of the column names that we don't want with a minus sign. And so basically this is saying we want all of the columns except weight and except bag ID. So it's just a little more efficient than typing out all of the colors, but you could also do that way as well. And so we want to make a new column now that contains these data. The column name will be color. And we want to make another column that contains the data that we've collected from these columns. And we'll call it count. So this is all we need to make our data into long format. And just because, let's arrange it such that the bag IDs go in numerical order from low to high. And we can also arrange by color. Uh, secondarily. Let's press play. Okay, that ran. And let's look at this data table. So here's long format. It's exactly like I had described. We basically collected all of the data underneath the color columns. Um, and now we have color as a categorical variable that can take on blue, brown, green, etc. And the count data is here. And as you can see, um, before in wide format, for bag one, we had many observations, count data for each of the colors. But in long format, bag ID is now represented on many different rows because there's you know, six different colors. We have six different observations for bag one. So again, this is long format because there's a single observation on each row. Six observations for bag one. Okay, I already stated this, but you know, just to perfectly annotate my code, I, I wrote it here. Okay, so we converted from wide format to long format, but let's say we inherited a data table that was already in long format, but we want to convert it to wide format. To do that, we use this pivot wider function. So let's make a new data table called M&M's wide two, just so we don't overwrite our original table. Uh, and we're gonna assign it the M&M's long data set that gets fed to this pivot wider function. And we're gonna tell pivot wider, take names from the color column in order to make all of these new columns and give them values that come from the count column. So if we press play, this should basically make a data table that looks exactly like our original one that was previously in wide format. And we can click it just to kind of look at it to verify, and there we go. So now we've taken all of the values from the color column and made six new columns corresponding to the different colors and their count data are below. So I'm gonna X that out because we don't need that. So that's just how we uh, convert from long format to wide format. And uh, it may sound pointless at first. Uh, it certainly did to me to kind of mush your data table into longer or wider formats, but it's actually extremely useful for analyzing features of these data using relatively little code. To illustrate, let's use this super handy summarize function from uh, dplyr. So say we wanted to know the total number of M&Ms in the data set. In wide format, we'd have to iterate across all of these rows, summing each column as we go. But if the data is in long format, all of the data is in a single column. So what we can do is we can take our long version of our data set and pipe it to the summarize function. And we're going to tell summarize sum all of the data that is within the column called count. And as you can see, uh, summarize produces a new table where uh, it returns a column called total M&Ms, which we named ourselves here. 
and the value in that column is the sum of the count column. Um, but to illustrate even further why having your data in long format can be super useful is we can use this group by function. Group by is also from dplyr and group by can communicate to the summarize function to tell it how to perform uh, arithmetic on the data. So here's, our, uh, here's an example right here in this code chunk. So here, group by is basically telling the summarize function to analyze the data by color. So here we're taking our M&M's long data set. And again, we have no assignment operator here. So we're not creating any new, or we're not storing any new data here. We're just taking M&M's long. We're feeding it to the group by function. So now things are gonna be grouped by color. So all analyses will be done with respect to blue, green, brown, et cetera. And then we feed whatever gets output of this to the summarize function. And we're going to tell summarize some things that are in the count column. So this is exactly what we did above, sum the count column, except now this summarize statement is preceded by group by. And as you can see, when we press play here now, instead of getting a single number like we did above, we get, we get six numbers, one for each color. So here, again, sum new, this sum function new to create sums as a function of color because it was preceded by group by. Super handy. So I'd like to make one note, which is um, this summarize function, you know, as you can see, it actually outputs a new tibble. So these results uh, is a new data table that has a new column, M&Ms per color, that we specified here. You could save this tibble and actually do more calculations on it if you wanted to. But uh, as you, you know, string your commands together in these pipes, if we were to pipe this to something else and do more stuff, whatever we do here, you cannot access the original tibble above you can only access whatever tibble was output from this summarize function. I'll remove these. Um, and again, we could have done this analysis with the data in wide format, summing all of the columns underneath, or summing all of the data underneath each column. Um, but by having it in long format, where we have a column that has all the categorical variables, we can just specify the column name and this summarize function will do all of our analyses with respect to that categorical variable. And this just makes our code super clean and super short. So um, instead of using the sum function within summarize, we can also use mean. So this code, is basically exactly the same as we did above, except instead of sum, we can put mean and press play here. And as you can see now, instead of reporting the sum of all of the blue M&Ms across all of the bags, now it's reporting the mean number of M&Ms, the mean number of blue M&Ms per bag. Okay. Let's instead combine this group by function with the mutate function, which we explored last time. But just to briefly recap, mutate is a function that allows you to add new columns to your tibble. Here, we're going to take M&M's long and we're going to group it by bag ID and then pipe it to a mutate function, which is going to basically create a new column that has the percentages of each of the colors per bag. At the moment, we have the raw count data, but let's say we wanted to know, you know, what fraction of M&Ms were blue for bag one. And we do this with this following code right here. 
And we do this by telling the mutate function, take data from the count column and divide it by the sum of the count column. However, mutate is only going, when it, when it performs this operation, summing data from the count column, it's going to sum data by bag ID. So because it sums bag, uh, it sums the counts by bag ID, it's gonna take all of the counts for bag one and sum them together. And then it's gonna take each data point from the count column and divide it by that sum. So it's gonna take three and divide it by the sum of all of the counts for bag one. And we'll just multiply that by 100 to make it a percent, and we'll store that in a new column called percent. So let's press play here. And as you can see, now we have a new tibble that looks very similar to our previous one, where we had weight, bag ID, color, count, and we have a new column, which is the percent of the blue candies for bag one. So a reasonably complex operation done with quite little code. Um, so here, uh, I'm actually gonna skip this example. Um, I thought I removed it, but maybe that did get updated. But um, this is basically the same code that we just executed, except we can you know, convert it into wide format to view the table easier. But let, let, let's skip that because I don't find it as useful. Okay, so um, we can also use this insight or these, these functions that we've learned to explore the data <clears throat> to kind of you know, either do some sanity checks to kind of see um, if values look the way we, we expect or to do simple analyses like get the bag, the five bags of M&Ms that have the highest percentages of red candies, conditioning on a weight of at least 47 grams. So basically what we want, I'm just going to go back up here and rerun this code. We want um, to get the bag IDs that have the highest percentages of red candies. So this one has 25%, but we also want to condition on a threshold weight of 47 grams. Scroll back down. So we do this by, um, again, this these data here, uh, sorry, these functions here are exactly what we did above. We take our long format table and group it by bag ID. And then we have to create this new column called percent because that previously did not exist in the original data set. And um, because the question only asks for percentages, we can get rid of the column that's called count. Those are the raw counts. And we do that by just saying select which is a dplyr function. It selects certain columns or unselects them if the column names are preceded by a minus sign. And because we're only really interested in red candies, we can use this filter function to filter our data set by looking only at rows that have red in this color column. So that's what this filter function is doing here. And so when, uh, if a filter, you can filter simultaneously on multiple arguments, um, and this is the intersection is specified by a comma. We want to filter on red values in the color column and values in the weight column that are at least 47, because we want to have a weight of at least 47 grams. And then because the question asked, we want the five bags that have the highest percentages of candies, let's arrange this new tibble. So we'll have a new tibble at this point. Let's arrange it in descending order from highest to lowest by percent. And that will you know, print everything to the screen, but we can actually just print the top five, which the question asks for by taking, using the head function with n is equal to five. And if I press play, you can see, um, here are the results. So bag 23 had the highest percentages of red candies. 
and all of these bags, you know, are above, have, have a weight that is at least 47 grams. And again, this, this tibble was not stored because I used no assignment operator up here, but we could in theory store it as a new tibble. Okay, cool. Um, so here is some bonus material that basically uses a new data set. Well, we actually used this data set last time, um, but it's new with, with, with this tutorial. And we basically kind of uh, explore these functions in a similar way, but I ask you a quite difficult problem and you have to kind of match, you know, given the language stated in the problem, you kind of have to think about which functions you might have to use in order to get that answer. Um, and so I'll just treat this as bonus material that you can go over on your own um, because I try to like to keep this to 20 to 30 minutes as we stated uh, originally. Um, cool, so that's, that's it today. Again, just to, to very briefly recap, I'm gonna go back to this cheat sheet. We basically used these two functions, gather, which is now called pivot longer because we're going from wide format to long format. And we've also used this spread function to go from long format back to wide format. Um, but this spread function has recently been updated to pivot wider. And again, it's nice to have your data in long format because then you can have a new column that specifies all of these categorical variables as opposed to having your categorical variables spread across a bunch of different column names. And with that, I will stop and happy to take uh, any questions or if people have been looking at the bonus material, I'm happy to answer any questions on that too. And thank you for attending.